It's time for some quantum mechanics and Python stuff. I'm going to show you how to make this. This is the wave function in a 2D square well, which I've done before, but we want to do it for any potential in the square well. Uh, and it's kind of complicated, but let's just start here. So this is what we want to get make. So let's just review really quick, and I've gone over this a bunch of times, but I don't think it ever hurts to review. This is the one-dimensional uh, Schrodinger equation, and I, hopefully you've seen that before. But uh, if I assume that the wave function psi can be split into a function for x and a function for t, then I get this is my solution for the time part. Done it a bunch of times. Uh, if you have questions about that, let me know. And then this is our space part in one dimension. That's in one dimension. Now, one of the ways we solved this in one dimension was with the finite difference method. So the idea was to take our uh, space and break it into finite elements of the wave function, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, and so forth like that. With that, we can define uh, the derivative, the second derivative, with finite difference. And I'm, I'm, I've gone through this before, so I'm going through it quickly. Basically, the first derivative, uh, we just take the slope between these two points, and then the second derivative is the slope of the slope, and we get this very important thing. Uh, the second derivative at the ith element depends on the element before it, the element, and the, and the after it, and the element before it. Now, one thing you'll notice, 1, negative 2, 1 is important. Now, we can only do this because we know at the very first element I, I don't know what that value is before it. That's fine. I'm going to set it equal to zero, right? And I have my boundary conditions, so those are set. Great. Back to the Schrodinger equation, the space part. Uh, we have that. Now we can just put in our expression for the second derivative, and we get that. Uh, and if I just group things together, I can make it look like this. And I'm going through this fast. Like I said, I've said that eight times. Uh, okay. So suppose that we just break this into just five pieces. And so I'm going to set psi 0, and I'm going to set psi 4 at both at 0. So I only have to deal with these three. I get the following three equations using the finite difference method. First, for the first one, I get uh, psi 0, psi 1, psi 2. And I can write it this way because uh, psi 0 is actually 0, right? We already said that. So it doesn't really matter that term right there. And then I get those three equations right there. And that's just using the finite difference method three times. Now, what we want to do is to write this as the following matrix operation. Uh, here, I'm, I'm just calling K this thing right here. So I have this tri-diagonal matrix, right? So I only have the diagonals of negative two and, and the, the potential, and then ones, and then zeros. And I can write my wave function psi as a vector. So now I get... Uh, a matrix times a vector is equal to a scalar times a vector. And that's the eigenvalue problem. But let's just see how this works just to show you that it is indeed the same thing. If I, if I multiply this matrix out, I get that multiplied by that. It gives me that. And again, that only works because that term right there is zero. And then I get that one times that is that and so forth. You can see how it all gets built. And again, when I do the third one, I'll have a psi 4, but psi 4 is 0. Let's look at the two-dimensional uh, wave equation. Here's the whole thing, right? Again, uh, oh, the most number one, what I want to do is to replace the second derivative in with respect to x with the Laplacian, which deals, has a, and this is in Cartesian coordinates, has a second derivative with respect to x, second derivative with respect to y, second derivative with respect to z. Uh, but other than that, I can still get the same time solution as long as my potential does not depend on time. And now I get the following space equation. And really the only difference here is I'm dealing with a Laplacian instead of the second derivative. Now what I'm going to show you uh, is from this paper right here, which you can't even see. Why did I mess that up? Let's see, make this a little bit smaller. Move this up. There you go. Uh, and I'll link to that down below. I found it really great paper. Uh, there's also a great video from Mr. P. Solver. He does a lot of great Python stuff. So I kind of combined those two together for what I'm going to do now because this is kind of complicated, but useful. So now I have a two-dimensional, imagine I want a 2D square well. Uh, I have a two-dimensional finite 
elements, right? So I have to break these size into psi 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so forth. And I could represent that as the following matrix. So psi is a, is a matrix, and that's fine. But that doesn't work. There's my matrix. What I want to do is to squish that into a vector. So this vector, this is an n by n matrix. This vector goes, I take psi 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and so forth until I get to the, the nth one. And then I start over. So I'm kind of like taking this row goes right there, and then the next row goes next, and then the next row goes next, until you have them all stringed out in a single uh, vector, which is important if we want to do the eigenvalue problem. Okay, now some magic. This is magic, right? Because magic is when you do something and you don't fully understand it. And I don't fully understand this stuff. It's kind of complicated, but but even the best magician can use magic that they don't completely understand, and that's what we're going to do. I'm just, just a little little gift there for you. Okay, so here's our... Uh, we have a two-dimensional uh, Laplacian. We don't have the z-coordinate. And remember, this is my x, right? That's the derivative respect to x. Uh, and we can write this as the following matrix. It's what we did before. That's what we did, right? We had the negative twos, the ones, the ones. The negative two goes with that. The ones go with those, and it works out just fine. Um, but we want to represent this as uh, this weird combination of matrices, right? Because we have both an x and a y. So this is this is going to be the uh, the the derivative for x. That's the derivative for y. And this is called the Kronecker sum, I think. I don't fully understand it. Uh, and then we can write these uh, dxx and dyys as the following. So this is and this gets. I told you it's magic. So you don't have to get mad. I already told you it's magic. So here's the. Uh, this is a Kronecker multiplication. That's my uh, derivative. That's the uh, identity matrix, and that's the identity matrix and the derivative. And we need to build these things. Magic. Okay, I'm going to say magic every term just to, to emphasize that I don't really know what I'm doing. But it works. So here is how I do this uh, identity Kronecker multiplied the Ds. And you get this matrix right here because that's the identity matrix. You know what that is. And the D is the, the matrix I said before. But you'll notice we have that D is another matrix. This is a matrix of matrices. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, but that's what that is. And I'm not going to write it out because it gets too crazy. Uh, and then what about this one, uh, DX times I? Then I get also, there's my D is the negative two ones ones. I need to multiply it by the identity matrix. So I get... Uh, the identity matrix, again, we get matrices inside of a matrix. It's crazy, I know. Magic, I already said that. And then we also need to represent our potential. Our potential, we have electric, I mean, our potential energy at different points, V1, 1, 1, 2, and so forth. And I'm, again, going to stretch it out uh, as a one-dimensional thing along the diagonal. And if you put all that together, we get this. Uh, this is our new Schrodinger equation as a finite difference. And we have these weird uh, Kronecker sums and the weird uh, matrices. But it doesn't matter because, remember, that's a one-dimensional... Uh, well, not one-dimensional. That's a, a list, a vector. That's a vector. That's a matrix. So I can do the eigenvalue problem again, and that's the important point. Okay. A bunch of stuff. So let's review. Uh, we're going to represent the wave function as finite elements in 2D space. Psi, uh, I, J, whatever you want to call it. We changed the Laplacian uh, to a finite difference, 2. I changed that to 2. It didn't change. Uh, convert the wave function with n by n elements, a, a, a matrix of elements, to a 1 by n squared. Right. So that's put them all in a list. Uh, convert the potential into a list and then create the Hamiltonian matrix. And that is an n squared by n squared, right? Because we have a matrix inside of a matrix. So it gets kind of big. Um, and then solve the eigenvalue problem. Now let's do the Python stuff. Uh, this is the first part. Again, I don't understand everything here. I understand NumPy. This scipy.sparse, uh, both of those, that's for dealing with matrices that have a lot of zeros in there. Because imagine that I have 100 by 100 or n is 100. So then I have 10,000 by 10,000 matrix. 
and I want to solve the eigenvalue problem. Well, that's pretty tough. However, if a lot of the numbers are zeros, it's not so, well, it's still bad, but it's not as bad. So that's what this scipy.sparse stuff does. Um, that's for plotting. Uh, I'm not sure why that's in there twice, but I just did what someone else did. Now we can build the Hamiltonian. This part, I, I don't know what I'm doing, but it doesn't matter because once we build that, the only thing that we're gonna change uh, are our, our, you know, our space values and our potential. So np.1 just makes a, a list of ones. This is my, uh, one of my diagonals, right? Cause that's the one negative two one. That's what that's doing, that's that, that D. And then uh, it's, it's just a sparse thing with, I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm, I'm just pretending like I know what I'm doing. Here's the, the total Hamiltonian. There's the kinetic energy, uh, negative H bar squared over two M. And this is the Kronecker sum of D and D. That's exactly what we had. And then U is just that, uh, this. V dot reshape takes my V values and makes it into a single list. And then there's my H. Okay, now here's the magic. Here's the, uh, the eigenvalue problem. And this is for sparse. That's what the S is for, I think. Uh, and I'm gonna use the matrix H. I'm gonna get 10 terms. You don't wanna get all of them, right? Because if I have 100 by 100, that's 10,000 is too big. And then I'm not sure what this which SM equals. But I'm gonna have two answers. I'm gonna have the energy values and I'm gonna have the eigenvalues. Now with the eigenvalues, we still have a problem, right? Because I'm gonna get this for my eigenvalues and I need to switch it back to that. I need to go back to this matrix form so I can plot it. Uh, a grid, it's a mesh grid really. And so here's a function to do that. It just, this eigenvalue.t, if I put in my, my n value, so n equals uh, one, two, three, four, uh, that will look at that, that element of the eigenvalues and then this takes as a transpose and reshapes it as an n by n instead of a one by n squared. Uh, I do need to normalize it. So, and this may not be the best way, but I did it anyway. So I went through, you can do the np sum, which is really nice, even in two dimensions. So this takes the absolute value of psi squared, the first one, uh, dx dy, and I did solve for dx dy before. And then I make a new function psi one, which is just that function psi one divided by the square root of a, and that does it. And then we're gonna plot it. Uh, this is x, y, psi one squared, and levels 20, contour plot, that's the, the first solution. And then just for fun, here's another solution right there. But don't worry, and this is for the, the plain infinite square well in 2D, which we've already done. Okay, let's actually do this um, let's see if we can do this with a different potential. Okay, here's where I might be making a mistake. Let's see. I'm just going to copy this. And then I'm going to go down here. Here is my... Uh, I'm doing this in Jupyter Notebook. Let's see. I need to move this over. I think that should be big enough. Okay, so I'm just importing all my stuff. Um, now I'm gonna make a mesh grid um, of my X and Y values. And I have a video on mesh grids, but I'm not gonna really uh, type all this out uh, because I don't want to. So I have 150 points. It's, let's do this one, let's make it square, one by one. And then I make my X values, my Y values. This is a mesh grid right there. And then I'm gonna need DX and DY for the normalization, so I just take the first x minus, the second x minus the first x, and that's my dx. Uh, let's just run that. Okay, now I need a potential. Um, let's do this first, let's see. Where did I do this? Let's make my potential, uh, I did, let's make, um a simple harmonic potential. That's pretty easy to do. So that will be V equals uh, X squared plus Y squared. And let's just plot that. PLT dot contour, which I always misspell. Uh, X, Y, V 
uh, levels equals 20. And there you go. Oh, oh, you know what I did? I did, let's do this. I was doing this another way. Oh, that's fine. It, because I went from zero to A. Mm, let's see. Should I do? Yeah, let's do this. I'm just going to copy this whole thing. I'm going to change my X values. Oh, I did this. Let's put it this way. I, I'll do that one in, in, in a second. So there's my uh, X squared plus Y squared potential, which is kind of cool. Okay. Now I can go over here. And where am I going to go? I need to make my H matrix. So I'm going to do that. And again, this is stuff straight from the thing. I think that will work. Now I'm going to solve for my eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is the part that can take a while. Oh, it didn't take that long. Strange. Um, now I'm going to define my thing that gets the eigenvalue. Run that. Uh, I'm going to normalize one of them. Let's do, uh, let's do one. Let's leave it at six. What, Cause who cares, right? Who cares? And then I'm going to plot that. Let's just see what we get. Okay, that's kind of cool. Not what I expect, but it is kind of interesting. Uh, let's go change this to one. 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 You have to say it out loud. Okay, I'm not sure what if that's what I expect. I think this is, hmm. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go back and change this to our circular potential, which is kind of cool. We have a one by one box, right? What if it's a circle? And this, I don't know what I'm doing, as usual. So I'm gonna take this off, and I'm gonna comment out that one. This is a 200 high uh, walls, and then the square stuff. I don't really know what it's going on here, but it's using this square from uh, scipy.signal. But if I plot that, you can see I have zero potential in here and then these high walls over there. Uh, let's rebuild the matrix. Let's refine the eigenvalues. See, that one's taking longer. Uh, that I don't need to do, but I did it. And then let's do this. Okay. Hmm. I'm surprised it didn't have like a circular color to it. Let's just change this to five. Five. Five, five, five. Okay, there you go. Oh, well, maybe that's not really circular, but well, there you go. So we've done it. We've done some magic. We've done a, a 2D infinite square well with non-trivial potentials. Now, what I could do is use this, right? Once I know the eigenvalues, the eigenvectors, I could use that to build other solutions. I could start with some, you know, random or set initial wave function and evolve it with time once I know those things. And I've done that before too. Okay. I had to make this video because I'm going to forget how to do this next time I want to do it. And so this video is for me. If you find it useful too, that's just a bonus. The end. I'll talk to you later.